Hele, podíváme se na ten Unreal Engine, na to demo, to mě zajímá. Vyšla uh, nová verze Unreal Engineu 5.2 a vyšlo nějaký tech demo. Takže tam zase bude ukázka toho, jak realisticky to jsou schopný udělat, tak na to se chci kouknout. Right, so last year we added several new features to the engine to support foliage rendering and the Fortnite team used those features to ship Battle Royale Chapter 4. At the same time, Jacob over there and the team at Quixel were experimenting with what's possible for photoreal foliage environments, as well as testing out the latest functionality that we've been building for Unreal Engine. So, Jacob's here with us today in the Unreal Editor. Let's explore the environment. And what better way to do that than off-roading? Sure. way to off-road than in a Rivian R1T. Now Rivian uses Unreal to power their instrument cluster, including 3D visualization of their vehicles. So we worked with them to bring the R1T to life in this experience. Let's head on out, Jacob. Sure thing, on my way. All right. So we're building tools Ciao, for interactive Ciao, and dynamic worlds. So here we have chaos physics simulating rocks that tumble as we drive over them. Leaves bend out of the way. And we also added some real-time fluid simulation. We worked with the team at Rivian to set up Unreal's chaos vehicle model to simulate the suspension of the truck and how the electric motors drive each individual wheel. Chaos also simulates how the tires compress and deform, and MetaSounds enabled the team to precisely resynthesize the sounds of the electric motors and mix them with the ambisonics of the jungle. So Rivian provided us with a highly detailed model of the truck about uh, 71 million polygons zle. that we're able to render in real time thanks to Nanite. Now the Rivian not only looks incredibly realistic because of Lumen and Nanite, but also its materials. And today we're introducing Substrate, our new material framework. Ty na to koukáš jak neandertálec na oheň. No, teď já mám velkou část neandertálské DNA v sobě, že jo. And to better demonstrate it, Let's swap the paint out for opal. Now, of course, you can't order a Rivian with opal body panels. Oh, but what the fuck? Opal was the internal code name for this project and also a really great demonstration of Substrate's capabilities. The base layer models the iridescence, refraction, oh, and reflections that occur that inside cool. of an opal. And on top of that is a layer representing the polished surface and how light is absorbed as it travels through that clear layer of varying depth. And now we can add back on the dust and dirt layers. And notice how the reflection changes when interacting with the dust layer and that there are no artifacts along the transition from dirt to dust to opal. So Substrate is more expressive, enabling artists to create materials like this with different shading models and compose and layer those materials as they see fit. All right, let's uh, head on out, Jacob. On my way. All right. In terms of performance, Substrate materials that are similar to the current Unreal Engine shading model cost about the same. But now, artists have the freedom to author more complex materials in extremely detailed use cases, like in cinematics and in film. So we're going to drive under this fallen tree here, and everything that you've seen up to this point was painstakingly hand-built by the environment team at Quixel. Everything since that fallen tree has been built using our brand new experimental suite of procedural content generation tools. Entirely an engine that are flexible, deterministic, and artist-driven. Our guiding principle in building these systems was to empower artists to make tools for artists. So Jacob's going to go ahead and add a procedural assembly to the world. And the cool thing is that it communicates... Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and the cool thing is that it communicates with other nearby procedural elements in the scene, like the creek bed. So let's say a designer comes by, wants to direct the player to drive to the left. Jacob can simply move the assembly to the right, and everything updates to accommodate that change. What the fuck? Game design is iterative, so let's say the designer comes back, wants to give the player the choice of going left or right again. Jacob can simply move the assembly back over. Now, the artist who created this assembly also added some additional handles that Jacob can use to art direct where rock slides occur. Allows him to customize the piece a little bit more, make it a little easier for the Rivian to drive by. 
So we started by handcrafting that original part of the level to set the visuals and art direction for the entire piece, and then built out procedural tools that allowed the team to create a much larger play space. So you ever. Now let's see how we can use these procedural tools to make larger sweeping changes to the environment. So Jacob, let's start by removing some of the trees in this area. Absolutely, that's easy enough actually. All right, <laughs> a little too much. Let's, let's add some trees back in. Okay. And let's also add in some cliff formations, give it a little bit more variability. So the procedural systems are all deterministic. So? As Jacob is experimenting with different sets of input parameters, once he finds a set that he likes, he can always go back to it and get out exactly the same results. And the procedural systems aren't just placing trees and rocks, but also fog cards, bugs, birds, everything that's needed to bring this environment to life. And everything that you've seen here works at scale. This environment is four kilometers by four kilometers. If we hide all of the procedural elements, we can see that original hand-built area, about 200 meters by 200 meters. We believe that there will always be the need for hand-building environments, so we design these procedural systems to be tools for artists that work in concert with hand-built content. Both Substrate and the new procedural tools will be available in experimental form in 5.2. And everything you've seen here is running in the Unreal Editor in real time on a developer machine with an Intel 13900K CPU and NVIDIA RTX 4090 GPU. Good news, Steve. So, Jacob, thanks for being here and helping us out today. Thank you Crazy. very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Crazy. Moc pekný, ty vole. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Our guiding vision... Nah for MetaHuman has been the democratization of complex character technologies, allowing you to work faster and see the results immediately. A character is only truly believable if its motion fidelity matches its visual fidelity, but animating at this level is a hard task for even the most skilled studios. Some of our best work leverage 4D capture, but this took specialized hardware and weeks or even months of processing time. While MetaHuman Creator gave you the ability to generate high-quality characters, animating them still wasn't as easy. This is why I'm very excited to announce a new capability to the MetaHuman product, MetaHuman Animator. Okay. MetaHuman Animator contains the essence of our 4D pipeline, but optimized to run on a single machine. Season one, I don't know. It's able to use iPhone as well as stereo professional systems, and today we're going to demonstrate how it works. For this, we're going to need Mel. Our technician John Cook and just the phone. Let him cook! <laughs> <laughs> Mel, take your position, please. Sure. Yeah. Let me know when you're ready. Mami Rokot. Okay. Okay, and action. I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture whether I'm acting scared or angry. <sighs> and sometimes all I need is a look. Cut. Thanks, Mel. That was great. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Our technician John is currently pulling Mel's performance from the phone. To be a but what will happen? Everything will be processed locally. We have updated our live link face mobile app to capture all data at the best resolution possible with the device. MetaHuman Animator uses video and depth data to convert um, uh, this data into high fidelity performance animation, and it can even use audio to produce convincing tongue animation. John is currently scrubbing through the take to pick the section that he wants to process. John, are we all good with the data? Awesome. So from now on, it's just a single button click to kick off the processing, which for a performance of this length will take less than a minute to convert into animation. So Mel, while that is processing, let me show you something else. Yeah. Oh, is that me? Yeah, this is what we refer to as your metahuman DNA. Cool, and this is generated by the capture we made earlier, right? Yeah, that's right. So from only three frames of video and depth data, we can generate a rig that predicts all of your facial expressions in just a couple of minutes. Wow. So. You only need to do this once for each actor? Yes, that's right. It calibrates the solver to your face so that we can produce the performance in, in, a, in a way that faithfully reproduces your original performance. That sounds cool. Yeah. So let's check back on the, on the processing, which today is on the latest CPU and GPU hardware from AMD. MetaHuman Animator uses a custom epic facial solver and landmark detector. The tough, we can uh, interactively look at the animation while it's being solved and compare it to the original. Yeah. 
So it looks like it just, it's almost finished. After this, it's gonna do one more pass to make the curves more stable. Which is really quick. And from here on, we, can, we just need to export the animation. This takes only a few seconds. And then John needs to drop it in the level and add the audio so that we can see the result. So Mel's MetaHuman should now be ready in the level. Mel, you excited to see the results? Yeah, can't wait to see it. Huh? I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture whether I'm acting scared or angry. And sometimes, all I need is a look. What the fuck? Thank you all. So, Mel, what do you think? I think it's incredible because it usually takes months between performance capture and getting any results back, so this is blowing my mind. <laughs> and all of this is solved directly onto animator frame and controls. In this case, we are using a bespoke 4D rig, which we created together with Ninja Theory for yeah, Hellblade 2. So but yeah, it's also but... ready to use on any MetaHuman or any other rig that follows our new MetaHuman standard. Let's have a look at that. <laughs> I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture whether I'm acting scared or angry. And sometimes, all I need is a look. So the same thing works even on stylized characters. What the <laughs> Thank you all. These technologies are completely redefining our creative process. As they will redefine yours, when we release MetaHuman Animator to everyone, in just a couple of months. Come on, that's scary. Actually, you can get out of Okay. Sign perf cut. Take thirteen. <coughs> So this day. I see through your darkness now. I see through your lies. I will show them how to see as I do. I will not appease your gods. I will destroy them. Ty vole, to je extrém, kámo. What the f... Dobrý, no. Dobrý. Tak to je... To, to není úplně to, co jsem čekal, když jsem pouštěl to video. ...players had never seen before. We upgraded with broad strokes, using Lumen, Nanite and other UE5... Gámo, třeba ten Fortnite teďka vypadá hrozně dobře. No cap, no cap, vypadá dobře, hrozně. ...and ensure they scaled on all platforms Fortnite ships on. First up was lighting. Now, our options in the past to improve lighting have been somewhat limited because Fortnite is a really dynamic game. Big lighting just doesn't work because the moment a player... Jako je pravda, že já to hraju v tom performance modu, takže já tam vidím úplný hovno, jo? Ale jako, jinak to vypadá dobře. ...as a wall, light maps are invalidated. So we were really excited to give Lumen a shot. It updates global illumination in real time as the environment changes. Early in Chapter 4 development, we captured a video of Lumen enabled in a Fortnite test build. And the play... Amo, reálně, já jsem teďka viděl nějaký tweet o, o Fortniteu, když udělali ten, ten level v tom novém kreativu, že jak tam vleze ten obrovský, vole, já nevím, co to je, drak, nebo ten ještěr, nebo co to je s těma vlkama. A tam právě někdo psal, že jako by se herní studia měli učit, jak, jak jako Fortnite není schopný prostě upadnout jako hra. Jsem, že posledních 5-6 let je to jedna z hlavních her prostě, což je jako jediný hry, které jsou s tím srovnatelní, jsou asi LOLko a CS. -ko. Prostě oni pořád jsou schopní to nějak zachraňovat, tyhle, to je úplně neskutečný. To, to, to prostě... Tyhle. Player in the video destroyed a wall and, and light just came flooding into the room. And honestly, it was pretty stunning. It brought new life to the environment 
and the realistic bounce light worked great with Fortnite's vibrant style. While initial results were exciting, you know, nothing is that easy in game dev. And as we discovered, real world lighting can create real world problems. Fortnite má velký pokrok na rozdíl od LoLka nebo Minecraftu. Jo, Minecraft ještě taky, no, to je pravda. No a jako Minecraft, ty vole, tam je prostě škoda, že, že, ten, že ty updaty chodí tak rychle, jak chodí, no. Že jako oni vydají update jednou za rok, přidají tam pět věcí a to je celý. Nepadej, komodníku, prostě... nepadej, ti říkám, nepadej, nepadej! Jo, to je prostě, když to právě, já to vždycky si porovnávám s tou Terrari, jo, kde samozřejmě ta hra není ve 3D a je to 2D, ale prostě v Terrari, v té době, kdy vycházela jedna dvojka, jedna trojka, tak byly updaty rok, dva od sebe a těch věcí, co tam přidali, bylo prostě 1500, že jo, to, to bylo prostě, ta hra byla úplně jiná. A v Minecraftu vždycky přidají jednu věc za rok, prostě to je úplně, no je to, je to škoda, no. Ale teďka, teďka ten nový update, který bude v tom Minecraftu, tak jako vypadá dost dobře, bych řekl, jo, na to, jak, jakým stylem oni to právě updateují, tak ty věci, co tam jsou teďka nový, se mi jako líbí. Škoda, že není Terraria 2, má být, má být. Oni teďka mají dodělat 1.4.5 v Terrarii, ve který má být ten Dead Cells crossover, ve kterým, o kterém se bavili a mají tam dodělat nějaké věci. A uh, Redigit, který, který jako vede, že jo, který je hlavní ten vývojář toho, tak říkal, že už jako nechtějí prostě do té Terrarie přijat další věci a že by konečně chtěli udělat jako tu novou hru, že jo. Že chtějí, prostě se, že chtějí prostě se pustit do Terrarie 2, no. Protože Otherworld ten, ten zrušil vývoj, že jo, před ty vole, už je dlouho pěti rokama třeba. Takže ten nevyšel, ale uh, v té v Terrarie má prostě, už, už je chtějí skončit konečně s vývojem toho a chtějí se vrhnout na dvojku, no. Tak jsem zvědavý. Ten Otherworld vypadal úplně super, mě se to hrozně líbilo, to mě právě mrzí, no. Co ta hra od Hypixelu, jako Hytale, ten měl být tenhle rok, ne? Ale oni to zase určitě odložili o pět let, ty vole. Had, uh, had no windows and were just too dark for gameplay. And it was also the first time we were using auto exposure and it was causing bloomed out areas when players were in dark. No, tady stojíme, jako jak vypadá Fortnite, no. Hele, pěkný, pěkný ten Unreal, ty vole. Moc pěkný, moc pěkný. Už se těším na další Travis Scott live event nebo něco. Protože to bude vypadat dobře, že jo?